Mark, thank you so much for joining us for our uh, Leadership Institute this, this summer. It's been wonderful having you with us. And um, we do this program called COIL Perspectives, where we pose three questions to leaders when we have the opportunity to grab them. Our three questions really have to do with what you might envision for education in the next three to five years. Now, I know that's not a real long time, but can things happen in that time frame? Second question has to do with what do you see as some of the barriers to us realizing that vision? And the third question has to do with the leadership skills that uh, today's emerging leaders need to possess. So let's start with the first one about um, you're, you're, I would say, a visionary. You're looking out, you're managing uh, to keep your, you know, your, your finger on the pulse of what's happening. What do you hope to see happen, maybe is the best mm -hmm. way to phrase it, in three to five years? Well, thank you. I'll, I'll take the compliment. <laughs> um, of course, we can't predict the future, so that's the first thing I guess we need to understand. So if we can't predict it, we've got to try and contribute as much as we can to shape it. And I suppose where we're at at the moment, the thing that concerns me about the kind of language that we're using, the discourse, the deficit discourse, is one in which there's a sense of crisis that somehow education, higher education, is in change. And that may be the case, but what I want to do is shift our thinking from one of education in change to education for change. So what is the change that we're wanting to take place and how can new technologies serve um, the ends that we're trying to achieve? I don't think we've had sufficient discussion about what those ends are, and I'd rather shift our focus in terms of the discussion to what the ends might be. For me, it's about creating a much more equitable, fair, socially just society. Um, it's actually about the future of humanity, quite honestly. I don't want to be too, um, I guess, uh, dramatic, dramatic about it. Yeah. But on the other hand, the grand challenges facing humanity, um, if we don't grapple with those, they're also tremendous opportunities, I sure. might add. But uh, I don't hear enough people talking about the way we can apply new technologies in education to address those sorts of challenges. Right. And in some cases, the technologies themselves are at the root of the problem. Mm. Um, our interest in new technology, the consumerism around this technology, right. the technology and the products that go into making it are typically a finite resource. So um, the kind of debate that we need to be having about the future is what we want. Um, I have a clear sense, so and people that know me know how I'm attracted to the whole mission of, um, of transforming lives and societies through new, new technology for the better, I might add. Because, right. of course, also we need to understand these new technologies haven't always transformed our lives right. for the better. Right. I can't tell you what that system looks like. Mm. Um, all I am is committed to shaping that and building that system in the small way I can. So just a follow-up question, because you made a comment that I found, uh, several that were interesting, but one that stuck out was, um, could the technology also be a distraction in this change process? In other words, taking our eyes off of the ball and going toward, I don't know, the bright, shiny object rather than, than what we hope to change? Um, Probably we're spilling out into some of the barriers, you, you, I think your second okay, question sure. is that um, absolutely, you're, you're right, although it's obviously more complex than that. By focusing too much on the technology, I think we're not realising the deeper discourses and the deeper, probably the word is forces, mm -hmm. the competing forces and coexisting forces at play here. Mm -hmm. um, Technology by itself hasn't caused globalization. It's part of a much bigger globalization that's been going on for centuries. But there are better and worse elements to globalization. Globalization is very complex. There's political, economic, social, cultural. But what we're seeing, I think, is the way in which new technologies within education are being borrowed by a discourse around the economic imperative for countries. Um, there's an element in which obviously we have to be prosperous in order to achieve the equitable and socially just sort of society sure, I'm talking sure. about. But for my mind, if that's the end, we're completely missing the point. So at high levels, many of our politicians talk about the imperative of investing in new technologies in our schools and our higher education institutions for the kind of skills they need right. for the 21st century. Those skills are going to be redundant as quickly as we implement them. So sure. again, I think that's what we're not losing sight of. What type of person, what type of society do we want? Okay. 
So um, this whole program that we've participated in the last week has been around the uh, issue of leadership in online learning. And I'm wondering if you've given any thought or observations about um, the unique characteristics or qualities of the leader either emerging into this role who f or who finds themselves in this role looking out three to five years. Uh, anything about that? Any ideas? Well, I guess over the last few days and the, um, the privilege of participating in the Institute is there's been so many wonderful little tidbits about leadership. So I'm more drawn towards something that perhaps can add on top of what others might already be contributing. Um, for me, leadership is also inherently about politics. That's probably the one thing I want to just underscore, that change is not constant or normal. Change is something that um, always brings values and um, other agenda associated. Sure. Change is not necessarily always benign. Mm -hmm. So as a leader, you have to have your political antennae very finely tuned. I think um, I offered that expression that came up on a number of occasions. If you're not around the table, you're on the menu. Yes. Now that's more than just being there. That's yes. more about the political strategic knowledge that you right. need to bring. I'm not sure we do good enough um, work in helping people appreciate how politics works, mm -hmm. and particularly universities, it's often described as they're more political than the political right. system you itself. You know, the, the funny thing is, though, uh, the term politic or politics mm -hmm. has, a, in some cases, a negative reaction. People think, oh, I'm not a politician. I'm not, a, I'm not involved in the politics. If you're in a leadership role or responsibility, politics is really about people skills. It's a really about the communications and all. And so you have to embrace that part of what leadership is about. Yeah, and there's another element true to, I hope, my um, philosophy, the integrity that I hope I can carry in my leadership. I'm a sort of Neil Postman teaching as a subver subversive activity um, person. Or I've used the expression, the light comes through the cracks. Mm. So I'm always looking for those opportunities to be subversive, but working from the inside, mm. using the language of the institution. I've learned through hard experience that trying to be a leader from the outside is very difficult yes. and actually can be quite destroying for yeah. people. I see some colleagues um, in that situation. Yeah. So in every little one brick at a time, mm -hmm. um, either it be building the, brick, the wall or mm -hmm. breaking the wall, that's where the political dimension just cannot be underestimated. Yeah. And you're right, politics is about relationships. I have a personal philosophy of never, um, always keeping those bridges maintained. Sure. Um, there's a fine line where I maybe be pushed, but not very often, because yeah. um, those relationships are just crucial to getting the business yeah. done. Very good. Well, thank you so much for your insights today, and especially thank you so much for joining IELOL. We really appreciate you being thank part you. of the program. Thank you. Right.